finally back with another laser video tutorial for you. If you already own a laser and you haven't started making and selling rubber stamps, this is your sign that you need to ASAP. So while I was dialing in settings to make rubber stamps for my own packaging, my own branding, my own business, I decided that I was just going to film one of these takes. This particular take, I ended up getting my settings absolutely perfect. So I went ahead and I uploaded it to TikTok and Instagram. The video did pretty well on there and I actually ended up getting a couple of handfuls of orders for rubber stamps. Then I decided that I was gonna repurpose the same exact video and upload it to my business page on Facebook on the stories there. That single video ended up getting almost nine million views and I was swamped with a ton of orders for custom rubber stamps. So again, if you are not offering rubber stamps in your laser business, you are doing yourself a complete disservice because there is a market for it and people will buy it. Anyways, let's get back into this tutorial. Let's jump into Lightburn and get started. First thing you need to make rubber stamps on your laser is the rubber. I grabbed a couple of sheets on Amazon. I'll link the same ones that I used here down below. Next, you need to measure the thickness of the rubber. It should have it on the product description on Amazon when you purchase, but I just grabbed my calipers to measure it to make sure that it was accurate. This is a must have laser tool, especially in the beginning when you are narrowing down the materials that you plan to use over and over again. Having the exact thickness just helps dial in your perfect settings for cutting and engraving. So bring your file into Lightburn. I made this in Photoshop, but it could easily be done right on your laser software as well. Duplicate the design and now you'll see it inverted, showing the portion that will be engraved. Then we need to add a border to cut the design out of the rubber. Since my fragile stamp is basically a rectangle, I just use the square tool. I change the layer to red, then set it to line. Select all, then resize your stamp to whatever size you want it to be. I made my width two inches. One of the trickiest parts of making rubber stamps on your laser is honestly just the computer work in Lightburn or whatever design software you are using. Most people would assume that you are engraving the design itself, but in actuality, you need to engrave around the design so that when it is stamped, the design is actually raised. To make sure that you are on the right track engraving what you need to, just go ahead and preview it in Lightburn. Just click the little computer monitor in the top toolbar. Drag the cursor over to the right and follow the path it's showing on the engrave. Now you're gonna to need to input your settings. And just to recap, I'm on a Thunder 51100. These settings have worked perfect for every stamp I've made for a customer and a great place for you to start on yours. In your layers palette, click the cut layer. That's the red layer here for me. For this particular thickness of rubber, my settings are 10 speed and 55 minimum and maximum power. Next, click the main stamp layer you are going to need to engrave. That's the black layer for me here. My settings are 200 speed, 40% minimum power, and 40% maximum power. Then click on the advanced tab in the editor and change the ramp length to 0.0197. The ramp basically determines the slope of the engrave. This helps prevent the design from bending too much when you go to stamp it. Now it's time to let the laser do its magic. To avoid flashback on the rubber, I like to add a piece of cardboard to the laser bed. Then you just add the rubber right on top of that. I used my Thunder camera to align this one. Once the material was in the machine, I just placed it where I needed and hit send in Lightburn. Bring the file on the machine and then we need to focus the material. Bring your laser head over and drop or raise the bed to about six millimeters. Then hit start on your laser. 
The downside to making rubber stamps on a laser is the amount of gunk and debris left behind. It is inevitable though with this type of material, but really easy to get rid of with a little elbow grease. Now I know this sounds a little bit odd, but I tried so many different things to clean the rubber and the best thing that I found was WD-40. I found that this took off the greatest portion of all of the debris and made it really easy to clean up. Just spray a decent amount right onto the rubber stamp and scrub it with a toothbrush. To get into the tiny crevices and corners, I used another favorite shop tool of mine, a plain needle. I used the back of it, which is less sharp and just scrubbed along the edges. Then you just need to use soap and water to get it sparkling clean. Dawn dish soap works great. All right, now with your rubber stamp designed, engraved, and cut, it's time to mount it. I grabbed a piece of scrap wood and just needed to cut it down to size. I used my miter saw to cut the mount out. Super simple. Now we need to go back into Lightburn so that we can engrave the design onto the mount. If you are only making a few stamps just for yourself, you may not want to do this step, but if you are making them for customers and offering this as a product, you definitely need to have the image engraved onto a mount. Remove the duplicate layer, which will invert the design back to its original state. Then we have to change the settings. I like a nice deep engrave, but that's just a personal preference. On these stamps, I'm at a 600 speed and a 60 minimum and maximum power. Again, I'm using my camera, so I just updated the overlay and set the laser to user origin. Place your block of wood onto the laser bed and move the bed up or down to focus. I'm typically at six millimeters for just about everything. Drag your file over to the block wherever you need it to start the engrave. Then on the laser, bring up the file, frame it to make sure that you are all lined up and straight, then hit start. For these first few stamps that I made, I just used 400 grit sandpaper and sanded away all of the debris and all of the char. This is another must have tool for any type of woodworking or laser work. It comes in so handy when you sand or even just need to clear dust from a workspace. I use it on every single engrave I do. So if you look at any rubber stamp that you purchase in a store, you'll see that there are actually three layers to it. The rubber stamp, the mount, and then sandwiched in between is a piece of foam. This step isn't absolutely necessary, but does provide a little bit of cushion when you go to stamp your design. It just gives a really, really nice, clean impression of your stamp. It also makes it really easy to attach the rubber to the mount. I grabbed this foam on Amazon, but any Michaels, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, or craft store is gonna carry it as well. Just cut it down to the same size as your rubber stamp, Remove one side of the adhesive, mount it to the rubber, then press on it firmly and evenly. Next, you'll remove the other side of the adhesive and mount that to your wood block. And your stamp is officially complete. Super easy to make and a huge money maker. One thing that I would suggest if you are gonna sell rubber stamps in your business, um, this just helps it look a little bit more polished, a little bit more professional, is if you grab a router and just route out the top edges of the mount. It just gives a much, much better finish. This is a great way to incorporate your branding into your packaging at a very, very low cost. You can stamp your logo onto tissue paper into a repeating design. You can stamp your envelopes. You can make stickers to seal your packages, stamp directly onto boxes, and you can even use the rubber stamps on the back of any of your wood projects or signs. By far, my biggest seller though is return addresses for non-businesses. I think I have probably done a couple of hundred stamps at this point in just the past couple of months. All right, friends, that is all I have for you today. If you own a laser, definitely consider making rubber stamps and offering them in your business. Highly, highly, highly profitable.